All right, so welcome to the second episode of the West Potomac Wolverine Podcast, WPWP. Today on the show, we have Jackson Kosmacki, West Potomac Class of 2016. And uh, how are you doing today? I'm, I'm doing okay. Yeah. And then next in, we have Jackson Harvey, which is Hayfield Secondary School, Class of 2016 as well. So double Jacksons today. That's right. It's a twofer. All right. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing? Right. Yes, I'm fine. Better, so much better now that I'm here. All right. With Sounds you all. good. Wow. Patient. I'm Max Barrett. Guess I was in the last one. I'm Sophia John, and I was also in the last one. And then Jesse Benitez. So, uh, all right. So you guys want to talk a little bit about college? Um, first year experience. Yes. Okay. Sure. Um, I'll, you, you go ahead. I'll go first. <laughs> um, I'll go first. Uh, so I got a UVA. Mm-hmm. And uh, what can I say? Well, I think, um, let's start with things that I was not expecting. Mm-hmm. I was not expecting the ways in which it would be similar to high school and to mm-hmm. earlier um, times in school. It's kind of like, you know, you, uh, the social structure in high school, you know, you have, your, there's a hierarchy. Mm-hmm. And I think everybody is kind of aware of this hierarchy. And we have these, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's everywhere. And you see it, um, you see kind of the same thing in, in college to some degree, at least for the college freshmen. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the senior year of high school, everyone pretty much has it figured out and has their friends and like, they're not a bunch of douchebags. But um, <laughs> then everyone kind of forgets that once they go to their first year of college <laughs> because they're in a completely new environment and their yeah, survival yeah. skills that they learned in seventh grade of middle school uh, freshman year of high school and probably kindergarten all kick in <laughs> as they try to sort their way through this new world that they're in because they're are you salty because you're at the bottom <laughs> of the <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I will wow. say <laughs> I will say that there's no the difference is that there is no bottom it's, there's no bottom unless you think you're there mm. or you think that or you're on or you think you're on top okay uh, which there are plenty of those folks who are mm. The douchebags I re- referenced earlier, but um. How do you feel about that? Elaborate. Like, well, what are some I mean, things that is what, anything that's happening? I mean, you got a lot of like. I mean, I think people think of UVA as this place with a bunch of like rich pricks. Um, <laughs> and they, they're there. They're okay. there in spades, maybe. But um, I that's not everybody there to any degree. And I think it's those folks often can be. Um, they can lord themselves over other people. Overpowering? Of, yeah, I think in the I mean, loudest group. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. They're definitely. The, I mean, the egos. Their okay. egos speak for themselves. They're, they're huge, and they think people are beneath them. But you see that all over the place. I mean, there's always going to be people who think they're better than each uh, better than other people. So I was surprised in which it was like not as sophisticated. People weren't as mature as mm. I expected them to be. And that sounds really like. Yeah, you're uh, sticking I'm the like, mud. I'm like, yeah, I sound like yeah, yeah. these people aren't mature, and like <laughs> I'm really bashing them. But um, it's cool. we bash people all the time. So. Okay, good. Um, and then, <laughs> and then in terms of good things, I mean, there's a lot of freedom. Uh, I think that's the kind of the stock answer that you hear about this sort of thing. But I mean, there really is. I mean, you can decide to go to class, decide not to go to class, and beyond just classes. I mean, you can just do whatever you want, um, and people choose to do with that. You know, people. There's a lot of, you know, like a, there's a lot of ways you can go with that, and some people go the route of as few responsibilities as possible, and other people, I think, um, kind of have this hard wiring that maybe their parents gave them. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think I'm one of those folks. My parents, uh, both raised in military families, mm-hmm. so and somewhere along the way, they learned how to raise a kid to be as if he was in the military. Well, that's a weird way of putting that, but like, <laughs> they raised me like military parents, kind of. Uh, and they've somehow hardwired it into my brain to be a good kid, a good little, a good little kid. Can't shoot. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know. That's that's some of my that's good. What yeah. about you, Jackson Harvey? I spent my first year at VCU on the fringe of everything because oh. they had a surplus of housing, and so I was put in a hall. 15 minutes by bus away from the main campus of school. Oh, and so, and I was with there with all the dummies who also signed up late for housing. <laughs> <laughs> so we were a unique population within VCU. And I saw the social structure that Jackson was talking about, oh. but from like a distance, like with binoculars, I was just watching it. And we were at this, it was, it was called, but because we were so far away, it was called Cabinus Hall. Mm. And um, because it was so far away, Nobody ventured the main campus to make friends over there. 
So it turned out that everybody knew each other in the building. And that was great. So it was a fantastic on-housing experience, even though it was the oldest building and it was the most run down and it was a hospital and it was probably haunted. <laughs> and nothing probably, worked. Somebody was probably murdered in there as well. You know? Oh, definitely. Yeah. So yeah. the real question is, have you done your housing for next year yet? Yes. Or are you still Ooh. waiting? I'm in the smack dab. Second. I'm in the middle. I'm everything. I've got a good place next year. So explain to us a little bit about what happened happened with that whole uh, transferring experience, I guess? Well, I um, I didn't go into, I didn't get accepted into the arts program immediately when I applied. Mm -hmm. And so I decided, I figured out that I heard from someone that you can just transfer into the art program later. It's real mm -hmm. easy. So that's great. So I decided to go to BCU and just plan on transferring in later. Mm -hmm. And with the time when I wasn't in the program, I decided, they ha I figured out they had these freshman workshops every Friday. And it was optional to go to for people in the class. So I decided, I'm just going to sneak in and pretend I belong there. <laughs> and I did, nice. for like every week, for like five weeks. <laughs> and they were nice enough not to kick me out. <laughs> but it was okay. The, the, <laughs> the, the, so, the structure of it was kind of strange. Basically, the seniors in the, had complete creative control, mm -hmm. and they kind of assigned freshmen what to do, mm -hmm. which I totally get seniority, and I'm... Not totally cool with it. So it's that it but it went a, a little beyond where it's like the seniors were meant to teach us everything, but then they didn't seem like they knew everything, you know? So it was kind of, um, the power structure was weird, and also it takes a lot of time because VCU Arts is, is so full of itself. It wants to commit you to it a hundred percent like you cannot it this program is designed so that you have to you have all this work and you have to spend all this time into it which is okay but um it's a little bit more lax at mason and just everything it was a little bit easier and also they were focused on one type of filmmaking like that like they told you jesse how you said earlier well, cinema is more Spielberg ass. We'll bring out your inner Spielberg, and then communications is yeah. different. You want to be the first Jackson Harvey, not right. the next Spielberg. That's right. right. That's what I. That's what I told them. I told all of them. <laughs> you showed them. I showed them. So, um, tell us a little bit about uh, both of you guys. Your major. So you're going to go into Mason next year, and you yes, are going to be fast. still at UVA. So right. uh, tell us what you're studying there again. I know. I don't know if you touched on that. So, uh, yeah, I'm studying um, cognitive science and media media studies, mm -hmm. at least at the moment, because media studies, media studies is like the closest thing, okay, it's a complicated answer. So to do <laughs> film, to do film at UVA, all the film classes are spread out into mm -hmm. a bunch of different uh, departments. Mm -hmm. So in order to get uh, like a comprehensive, to some degree, uh, film education, even though it's mostly just film studies there, you have to just take all these different classes and they might not all go towards one one major in the same way. Um, so then the media studies major is like kind of a journalism thing there and that has the most concentrated kind of uh, set of, of courses that can give you the closest thing to a film major there unless you go this studio art route which has maybe five like a bunch of cinematography classes and a documentary filmmaking course or you can build your own major for film production which some people, well at least I know a couple people who have done that's what I would try to do, but that's it's a hard process, so I'm trying to get that in motion. Mm -hmm. um, but then the other one, cognitive science, that is, for anybody who doesn't know, it's interdisciplinary study, and that involves neuroscience, linguistics, psychology, philosophy, and computer science. Mm -hmm. um, all things I find pretty interesting. It's a big mix. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that's it's a cool. Fun, it's a yeah. fun mix. You get to learn how people think, which is pretty complicated. And then Jackson, yeah. I know you're also going into film. So. Yeah, I'm just, I'm going to do just straight film and video studies at Mason, mm -hmm. and then um, I'm, I haven't decided what part to specify in, like whether it be screenwriting or production. I'm not sure. I mm -hmm. kind of have to investigate when yeah. I get there. Well, <laughs> anyways, you um, let's talk about some some of the work you guys have been doing, you know, in these past this past year. Yeah. So yeah. I also talk a little about Old Town. When am I going to get my copy? Oh yeah. That's <laughs> right. When am that's I receiving right. my check in the mail, Jackson? It's been over a year. That's <laughs> a good question. <laughs> if I ever get any money, you will get yours. No, I'm just but. kidding. <laughs> um, so yeah, Old Town uh, completed. I mean, we finished shooting, I guess, in April of last year, April 2016. Although that was Mason Lewis. I guess we finished principal photography in January. Mm -hmm. And then we finished like picking up stuff in April and finished editing in May. And the film was completed in, in June. 
So June of, that was a year ago. Wow, geez, okay. And at this point, the film has been shown to some people mm -hmm. in small groups, but I'm working to put it on Amazon Video, and that involves like a pretty long captioning process. You have to do your own captions for it. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty lazy, so I haven't finished that. But Old Town, movie about uh, a young man who wakes up not remembering, how, he wakes up on a park bench in Old Town in winter, wondering how he got there, not knowing how he got there after a party the night before, and also wondering what kind of person he is. And mainly it's a, it's a search for identity in the, in the psychological sense. He knows that his name is Eric Haywood and who he is, but he doesn't know what the kind of person he is. And so it's that, it's that kind of movie. Uh, I think it's a comedy. There's a lot of humor in it, so let's call it a comedy. But, you know, I don't know. I feel like I don't really think of my movies in terms of genre. I don't know about you, Jackson, if you think of the genre or if you just make your movies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I do. You're right. I do kind of think of this. What would be fun? What, what's in, yeah. Yeah, what's yeah. in there? You're right. I totally agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And you figure out the genre later. I it's, think, yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, so that was one yeah. of the things I've done. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've been I've worked on a huge project while I was at VCU. It was um, it was based on a comic I did a while back, and then it was my video essay for the cinema program. <laughs> oh, it's, nice. it's called Bo the Artist, and it's about a caveman, <laughs> and he um, and he takes himself and his artwork extremely seriously, mm -hmm. but no one else in the clan understands or cares. And so he goes through the, the, all the struggles of a modern artist, but he's a caveman, and so he's trying to find his role gotcha. in the art. Right, but it's nice. very he's very pretentious, and it folks find out a lot of different things. But um, and he's yeah, but um, in Richmond there's this park called Belle Isle. Mm -hmm. And it's like all these rocks and stuff, and it's really cool looking. And I went down there one day, and I realized, oh my god, this would be a great place to film by the artists. <laughs> and so I launched myself into a Kickstarter campaign, and I have the entire page made. And I did a video for it, and I picked out actors from a local talent agency, and then I went to a costume designer here in Old Town and talked to them about what costumes would be and I had a budget and plans for a premiere and all, I really went into it only for a film that's going to be like 15 minutes long it was a short film but but then um, but then I realized I actually don't have time for that at all <laughs> I don't have time for it and it actually broke me psychologically because I put in so much into this one thing and then to realize, oh crap, I can't do it. it. Like it's like all the energy turned back into my insides and just destroyed my guts. Those <laughs> <laughs> yeah. guts. So, but now I've I've I um worked on like so that finalized, and now I got a new thing that it's going to be for the summer, and it'll be a little bit longer, but I can do it on my own on my own time. Mm -hmm. So it'll be it'll be great. So you wanna, yeah. do you want to uh, explain? Plug it. Plug it. No, this is I'll plug it. This <laughs> is this is a film. Or do you remember our audience? Do you remember <laughs> last year um, the music video I did and I had to play mobile figures and yeah, the guy yeah, in the I RV love that. And, oh, yeah. uh, the Jim Croce <laughs> video? It's going to be filmed in the same way as that with the figures, mm -hmm. except it's going to be um, longer and it'll have voice actors and sound effects and stuff like that. Like it'll be a real story with the characters. I'm going to build sets and all that. And it's going to be a story. It starts out a little bit like Survivor Jeff, but there's a um, this archaeologist, and he goes down into the jungle, the Amazon jungle, which is the woods in my back, which is <laughs> the woods in my backyard. Yeah, of <laughs> um, he goes down into the jungle to find um, an ancient city of ruins that were down there called ruins of the ruins of Tuitano, mm -hmm. but he disappears completely, and so his. But then he's seen by chance by a field guide down there. Then the field guide, um, he watched a documentary with the person earlier, and then he emails. And then it's like it turns out. Then this his mentor comes down to save him, and he's getting help with this jungle guy who's helping him find him. And then his uh, then his intern is there too. And then it turns out that the aliens built the ancient alien people were right the whole time <laughs> they find the temple and it was built by the aliens and then the little alien figures chase them and stuff like that how did this idea nice. come about <laughs> um i took an archaeology class mm. in at vcu mm -hmm. and it was just so i was gonna I, it was the placeholder class so i could get into a world religion and get that credit off but i loved the class it mm. was fantastic i thought this, the stories were so cool I learned so many cool facts. <laughs> <laughs> it was so interesting. I loved it. Yeah, <clears throat> Everyone else awesome. thought it was boring, but I thought it was pretty <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. And then, um, but then I learned a lot about 
the archaeological process. Mm-hmm. I think in a past life I was an archaeologist, yeah. and then <laughs> and then um, about the the process and how it works because my professor was a real archaeologist and he traveled the world. He went wow. to Bermuda wow. to um, for spring break to there was a shipwreck there Mm -hmm. and that shipwreck is that story of how that shipwreck got there is actually going to be in a Colin Firth movie three years down the line like they were talking to him about it they consulted him about it and then when he was in the Bahamas they know that they're doing production the locals there Mm -hmm. they asked him if he was Colin Firth (laughs) but he's not he doesn't look into his mind but yeah so it was interesting for example did you know that Thomas Jefferson was obsessed with mastodon bones and woolly mammoth bones and fossils did not. I didn't know he that. thought <laughs> he thought that they would still be existing in the Rocky Mountains and he that he sent Lewis and Clark out west he thought that they would find real life woolly mammoths and that's why he bought yeah. Louisiana yeah. the whole <laughs> Louisiana purchase was just to find out yeah they just found out but imagine how disappointed he was when they came back with cranberries and beavers yeah. <laughs> so, so where are we going to be able to view these um, films. So, like, uh, Bo the Artist, is that it? Did you ever complete that? No, it? I have the Kickstarter page, and literally the day before I launched, I clicked launch, I realized it wasn't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Those things are so just like hard to get money through. I mean, mm-hmm. Kickstarter's GoFundMe, it's like you think the money would just pour in, but it <laughs> yeah. really doesn't. Because you know? everybody's I had a doing small Everyone's doing them. Have you used it before? Have you made a profile? I did, a, I did a GoFundMe, I didn't do a Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I. It was well. I had this guy. I met a connection I made through the Burke and Herbert mm-hmm. contest. Oh yeah, and he helped me out because he made a successful one a long time ago about oh, some wow. basketball team. Yeah, wow. in Vermont. So he helped me out, um, but it didn't go into fruition. I told him it's a. It's not. A, I'm not quitting, but it's a tactical rescheduling. Cause it's <laughs> <what I'm saying. laughs> Nice. Yeah, so it'll probably get made as soon as I have time for it, but I don't know where that would be. Mm, but this right. doesn't, yeah. We'll be expecting it down the road then. Down yeah. the road. Yeah. This will be done by the summer. Ooh, and, cool. Um, at least done filming by the summer. And then I'll send it to different festivals and stuff in the fall or True. whenever. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll be Exciting on the lookout stuff. for that. Yeah. yeah. What about you, you, Jackson? You working on anything right now? Yeah, yeah. I have a, I say I have a script that's, we have actors, we have, I mean, we have everything ready so we're just looking to get a shooting date mm-hmm. and it's a t- small small little movie um like w- two set you know two set pieces and uh yeah i mean how do i des- how do i describe this movie it's um it's just it's kind of a I, mine's not nearly as high concept as jack <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's just it's, like uh it's like a i don't know how to it's it's a guy who has trouble it's now that I think about it, it's eerily similar to Old Town <laughs> in, in this question of like, uh, but it's a guy who's doubting his, you know, his decisions in college and what he's going to do with himself, um, and kind of confiding in his friends. Yeah, at this point, I I, I don't remember. This it's not a plot heavy movie, but it's, oh, it's also about, I like those kind of stories. Yeah, yeah, it's very it's like a it's like I don't know. I guess it's a slice of life type thing. Mm-hmm. What it starts off with, he's watching these videos of him that he made when he was like a kid, like elementary school. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's just watching them and he's getting like really nostalgic. He's like, you know, he used to go out and just love of life kind of thing, like, like kids are, mm-hmm. and just make these movies because he thought it was fun. And then like later on, he realized he hadn't made a movie in like a long time. And he's just, um, he like misses his old self. He feels estranged from like this kid that he feels is more true to his own spirit mm-hmm. and his own self. Um, and so he's he's trying to like return to that, and he thinks he's gotten so far from it, and that you know he's like he's been because you know. the thing is with kids is that you know that's ultimate freedom is to be is to be young, like to be a child because you have no responsibilities, you have yet to be screwed over by the world, you have your whole life ahead of you. <laughs> like, all you have to do is just like have a good time and like don't be an idiot and don't get like. Don't even get too badly hurt because if yeah. you get hurt, you heal like really yeah. quickly. Like <laughs> it's you know, so like kids have it the best. So like you know, he's since been screwed over by the world multiple times and has this like pretty bad perspective on his future and thinking like you know, oh, the film industry is like impossible to get into. And, like when I was young, I I thought I would definitely had a chance. And <laughs> this movie of doubt. It's a movie yeah. about doubt. Um, it's called Before the River. And um, yeah, we're gonna shoot it here soon. Just depends on when the actors are free. Which really, you know, the first time you decide when actors are free is not when actors are actually free. Yeah. Kind of, <laughs> so true. it's like, 
we should probably yeah. film it soon so that I have time for them to flake on me, and then we can maybe we'll <laughs> shoot it in August. Yeah, or something. nobody likes working with that. Mm. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I need to plug the fact that I need. I still am casting for some of the parts here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've got um, so far. I got Dan Evans and then Eduardo, who are going to voice two characters, nice. and then um, but some other ones I need help with. So right. yeah, we'll review that. Later. <laughs> and all your all the characters are Playmobil figures. Yes, like all of nice. them. Or aliens. The aliens are a different <laughs> brand, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've always like kind of wanted to be a voice actor. So yeah, yeah. yeah there's the female part. <laughs> yeah, this is your first uh, foray into it now with mm, this podcast. Yeah, you see yeah. It, so. yeah. Getting, that's getting true. Actually, yeah, yeah. You that's true. Do. Work on the voice. So your film. How did you come up with that title for the one you're shooting? Before the river. Yeah. Well, the, the, they're sitting on a shore. Okay. Of a river. Um, so, but also, like, I mean, the river has some symbolism to it. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, we look out. I mean, you look out upon the water. And you can see, like, you can see everything. You can see the sky kind of unfolding before you. You can mm -hmm. see the, the, the far, you know, the middle distance and stuff. And um, there's a lot of, like, looking out of, upon water, there's, it's like an interesting image of kind of hope and nostalgia, at least. You know, I think to some degree my, I was subconsciously influenced by, like, on the waterfront or something. Mm -hmm. and these images of Marlon Brando standing on, like, the bow of the ship and looking out. And it's kind of like... You know, it's a similar name, Before the River, On the Water. I wanted to call it On the River, but I'm like, that's too close. <laughs> um, so Before the River made a little more sense because it's also like, it's before something, it's before his realization. Um, and in a lot of ways, it's a movie about friends mm -hmm. and kind of the role that they play. I mean, you have this realization as you get older that like, you know, sometimes like other people are essentially what we live for, mm -hmm. you know, which is actually an interesting thing that like apocalypse narratives bring up mm -hmm. is like, you look at I Am Legend or like all kinds of apocalypse narratives. Yeah. Like, pe if people think they're the only person left, alive they usually are sitting there contemplating like killing themselves yeah. which brings up an interesting idea of like you know what are we what are we living for exactly and so in a similar way it's like what are the roles that that friends can play for us so i don't know how that figures into the title <laughs> but um i think a lot of times with the titles i just mm -hmm. kind of I, I usually operate in like threes for mm -hmm. some reason like they sound phonetically pleasing to just have like yeah. he's got runes of Tota runes of Toitano. that's yeah. like pretty good nice. yeah three word <laughs> titles sound sound nice they do you're right that's true <laughs> I think punch drunk love most Both of mine the because before the <laughs> before most of them were most of mine have been um names like survivor jeff the legend of Danny logo for the artists i finally have one where i can nice. name it something else <laughs> yours all yours all sound like folk songs in a way like, that's i do artists. listen to a lot of <laughs> the legend of danny lobo like yes. that off highway 61 i think yeah oh god that's my favorite album also. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um yeah i i think i am in yeah that's actually true i think i do i do love history a lot and so i think that's where i get most of my ideas I like those kind of ideas. And you had that yeah. Jim Croce song over, like, you have, that's like your aesthetic, man. You're like, 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 yeah, co underrated film by the Coen Brothers. Supremely <laughs> underrated. A lot of people just watch it with me and go like, that's just depressing. Like, why did I watch this? And I'm like, I'm missing the point. Man. Would you say a lot of the so films that you're working on are kind of a reflection of yourself in a way? I mean, I think... <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean that in like a... Only, yeah, only to some degree. <laughs> I feel like they're very like, uh, I don't know, like intrapersonal kind of uh, yeah. realizations of personal. life and stuff. Yeah, personal. I mean, I think, yeah. a, I think a lot of good art comes from a very personal place. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, I mean, I just... The last two scripts I worked on are like very not about me. Like Old Town okay. was like kind of mm -hmm. similar to my experiences before the rivers. But they're relatable. You they're know? definitely yeah, I think so. That's one thing that helps about making a very personal story mm -hmm. is that ultimately a lot of our struggles are not unique to us. Yeah, that's one thing you learn is you like. Mm -hmm. I think middle schoolers think that like the first person who experienced a set of emotions like nobody else. <laughs> the world revolves around them. Exactly, it's very <laughs> solipsistic. But then you know. If you start analyzing like your own issues in life, your own conflicts, it's like other people have had the same thing, and that's you end up drawing this kind of audiences to your film. Um, so I guess a lot of my f movies do come from a pretty personal place. This last one I worked on, not so much, because I was focusing a lot more on plot, mm -hmm. because I had just written Before the River, and I was like, oh, there's like no plot here, so maybe I should work on that. We but also um, act, but you also act to your main characters a lot of times, right? And you, like, yeah, you, you I do. Him. Yeah, that definitely makes it seem super personal. <laughs> 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 it makes it yeah. seem that way, but it's also I get the practicalness of that too. It is very practical. Like with Old Town, it's like I yeah I wasn't gonna be able to find a lead actor to be there for as long as we're because Eric, exactly. the main character, is in like every single scene. 
Um, so yeah, it was like there wasn't going to be anybody who was going to do it, but I knew I was going to be there every day. And I also <laughs> of course. Knew the yeah. character yeah. better than anybody else was going to because I wrote the script. And like at that point, right. You might as well just take it. But, I mean, the thing is, like, there is a difference between the characters that I write and myself. Like, mm -hmm. they are not reflections of me. Okay. They're very different. Like, Eric Haywood's kind of an asshole. <laughs> Which, that's not so <laughs> I say I'm not <laughs> one, but, uh, but he, uh, pardon my French, maybe I should clean it up a little bit. Um, but, you know, they're, they're, they're not, but they are kind of personal. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. That's good. And you said your inspiration comes from history and things like that. I mean, there's yeah. a certain style to your type of work. So. Yeah, that's nice oh. of you. Thank you. <laughs> I think, well, um, it kind of is an, it kind of reflects different parts of my, just my interest at that moment. Mm -hmm. So, like, when I, when Survivor Jeff, I was really interested in nature and I thought maybe, um, I was into environmental science at that point, and then I thought, and then I was also thinking, looking ahead for like camping trips and outward bound. So I think I incorporated that, and then, but also for Daniel Lobo, all he did was want to be free, and I was so sick of college and like applying for colleges and like high school and stuff. Yeah. Looking back, I think it showed a bit of my anger with that <laughs> process. But it's never. It, but I think mine are, I think mine are a lot different. I don't like writing about characters that are even similar to me. I yes. dislike it. Mm -hmm. I see no. I would rather make it about some weird kid who lives in the attic, you know, <laughs> in the attic of the school. <laughs> anyway. So kind of like you. Yeah. Oh, shoot, maybe it is <laughs> yeah, like yeah. rats. Yeah. Maybe I learned something about myself <laughs> <laughs> about this podcast. Well, why do you think you don't necessarily like writing characters that are too similar to yourself? What do you think that I is? hate listening to myself talk. I <laughs> hate oh. all of my thoughts. So don't listen to this podcast. Yeah, you're not giving this I do. To don't, don't listen to yeah. this podcast. I do. No, I hate it. I can't stand it. <laughs> I this can't. podcast? You no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. no. Wow. The podcast is good. No, yeah. Not yeah. even done uploading yet. I think I already hate I it. dislike it. Yeah. I think a lot of people do hate the sound of their own. Can we agree? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody hear light sound? Uh, yeah. Apparently it sounds, I think, what is it? Guys' voices sound higher to them than mm -hmm. they think, and mm -hmm. girls' voices sound lower. And I think I, both cases are. Oh, that might be interesting. Yeah. That kind of makes sense. That's what I've heard. That's what I've. That's what I've heard at least. Um, and that is kind of true. But at some point, actually, if you listen to your voice enough, you just kind of like stop hating it. Yeah. So I that's agree. one no, thing. I agree. So th I guess that's one way to get out. If you even if that's <laughs> even something you have to get over, yeah. it's like you could just start recording yourself. You just talking stop all the time. talking yes. for the rest of your life, so you or never have to that. hear yourself. I think I also <laughs> meant voice. I do hate that also, but I think I also meant voice as kind of a a, oh. a little bit more identity. Uh, yeah, mm. yeah, a little bit more like that. Uh, well, it's it's kind of alienating because if you start to write about yourself as a character. And when you're anal when you're looking at a character you're writing, especially protagonists, it's like you have to look at all their flaws, mm -hmm. yeah. as well as all their vir all their virtues. And when you look at that, and if it's they're too close to yourself, you really start <laughs> to like hate yourself in a way. You're like, oh man, I'm a horrible person. It forces you to think <laughs> about of. yourself as a third does. person. <laughs> That's yeah. very unsettling to like That's, have to think about how is, bad you are. It's yeah. weird. I also don't think I'm very interesting, so yeah. I don't think I could make something. We interesting think you're out interesting. Out yeah. So that's why we had you on today. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Both you wow, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's reassuring. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We need some reassurance in our life. I think we so, all do. Okay. Uh, I had an idea. Of, oh, do you have a film just call, club in your college? What do you do? Do you have anything do. like that? We have a filmmaker society, UVA Filmmaker Society, and uh, we do, we make short films. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I had a there. There wasn't one the VCU that was obvious, but I had a plan for one. What if it's <laughs> a film before break club? And so you make a film before winter break, and then you make a film before spring break, and then you make a film before oh, summer break. And then it's like you have a time schedule, and then everyone help everyone in the group helps each other make their thing. I'm short gonna films? I'm gonna yeah, steal that film. idea. And <laughs> you can you can steal that there's idea. There's gonna be a JMU uh, film before break club now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Jesse. Maybe we can start one at Mason if there isn't something like that. Nice. That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. That's a good. You guys have any um, advice for future college? Students or know. people in college. I don't know. Well, don't let expectations kill a good time. Is what yeah. I did right. because I did because at my cabinet's hall thing, I wrote a poem about this oh, <laughs> and I put it on the Facebook page. Yeah. It was You're a, one of those kids. Now. I, uh, <laughs> I try. I make it rhyme you, though. At least have, I don't make poems. Do you that go to poetry slams rhyme. in college? No, <laughs> I would never go to a poetry slam. Why? Why not? Breaking. 
Really? What do you think? I yes, too nerve wracking, and too many people who take themselves too seriously. Oh, I yeah. think that's I the only reason why I would go to see that in action. Then <laughs> maybe <laughs> if you're seeing it with that emotion and intention, yeah. yeah. I would yeah. do that. Maybe, <laughs> maybe <go>. that. <laughs> but beyond that, I would never do it. I, yeah. I, I, plus, I only like poems that rhyme. I don't think. <laughs> okay. I was the editor for oh, my me. literary magazine in high school. Remember? Oh, yeah. And oh, all right. it is is poems that don't oh. even rhyme. Only where Can't the you just try? Nothing else. Can you just try a little bit and make it rhyme? <laughs> free, verse, free verse is not as cool as people think yeah. it is when they're yeah. writing it. It's like, try a little harder, please. Yeah. It's like you're, you're trying to be deep, but like, stop. Really, <laughs> what, really stop. what a poetry slam way. is, is a how well I am at public speaking would, would you say oh. it's more, it's not even like poetry anymore, it's more of like um, performance art, I guess, is oh. what it's becoming? What yes. It yeah, that makes sense. Well, the ones that I've, I would only say that just because the ones that I've heard have, don't have as m- very many substance, but they're spoken really well. So maybe, mm-hmm. maybe it's more That's of a cool. performance. But I have no idea. Like I said, I would never go to one. <laughs> it never happened at <laughs> one. Been to so one. I probably shouldn't yeah. say. You know what? I'll go to one. Just I had a friend to, who was really into those. Oh. I have a friend who's really into those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> He's, yeah. I'll go to one, Tell I'll let you guys know how that went. West okay, Poe did good. a uh, poetry slam. Actually, oh, that's right. the, mm-hmm. the week Mantelli got back from... Uh, I was there. From breast <laughs> cancer and all that. Uh, yeah, that was uh, interesting. They had uh, poets come in that Miss Hendenberg knew, and cool. uh, they had students go. I was the first student to go, which... That was nerve wracking. Wait, so you presented a poem with poetry? Song? Yeah, I did. Do you oh, want to? Wow. Do you want to say it? No, I, for, I forgot it and <laughs> I have it written down somewhere. Did yeah, I, I heard a lot of mixed reviews. Um, I enjoyed it. I was there. I thought it was cool. I thought it was a good idea. I yes, it. it is. Um, it took a lot of guts for the bunch of students to go up and you yeah. know say. So they said some really personal things, and huh? a lot of the poetry was really close to them. So, um, yeah. That's good. That I'm sorry cool. for roasting anybody who's loved no, no, it's cool. poetry. <laughs> it's totally I'm, not, I'm not big on poetry <laughs> I either. Just hurt it's so taste. many feelings. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want to offend anyone who's... Uh, who like poetry, put that but in the trigger warning wrong. in the podcast? Yeah, description. the fact yeah. that I even have to leave a disclaimer is just like just shows how politically correct our world is becoming. Like, a, yeah, you know but I saying? do think you can't pu- say everything. Part of it's because it's a public school thing. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I but also they just—I mean, just in general. Like, have you seen on Twitter? You can't say. You got to watch want, what you say. I want to address this. Well, so. Yeah, yeah, address it, please. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like roll up my sleeves. I'm like, let me just okay. So. We live now in like this era of outrage where like everybody's yeah. angry about everything. Mm-hmm. Reasonably so, I guess. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't even... But anyway, so like we're, <laughs> everybody's always and the thing is now it's like you're supposed to be angry about everything and mm-hmm. you're supposed to be publicly angry. And with, with the forums we have now online, it's like you are supposed to make a big show of how angry you are and everybody's got to know it. Um, and so now civil discourse mm-hmm. is as uncivil as it's been in a long time. And that's that is the product of, of what you can air quotes call PC culture. Mm-hmm. Um, because as people, I mean, let's, the 2000s uh, up until like, let's say 2014 was like when political correctness became, uh, came to the fore and like people paid attention to this kind of stuff mm-hmm. in the interest of not offending people, yeah. which I think is a, no- which I think to some degree is like a noble aim yeah. not to like alienate mm-hmm. fellow Americans. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just something you shouldn't do in general. I mean. To some degree, you shouldn't, like, you know, to some degree, you shouldn't, like, offend people. Mm-hmm. You know, the, we, I mean, if we won't get into exceptional cases, because sometimes I think if it's in jest. I just, you know, just if, it's, if it's a joke, yeah. I mean, yeah. There's, there's, you can't go too far, Kathy Griffin, I guess people yeah. Yeah. saw that as going too far. Um, but I think... How do you feel about that? <laughs> I mean, honestly, I, I was just, not as like, blown away by that. Cares. Cares. Nobody like, cares. There's like a lot of hoo-ha. People over, made yeah. pinatas of Obama and lynched him. Like, who, yeah. like, who cares? It's like, like, yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the things is like... That, that kind of ties back. So people are like shouting each other over this because some people are bringing up like, well, nobody got angry when like Ted Nugent... or. All the liberals got yeah, angry right. and Ted Nugent said suck on this Obama with like a picture of a gun. And then now like everyone's defending Kathy Griffin by calling it art. It's like I think nowadays in the age of like uncivil discourse, it's like people on either sides of the aisle as it gets more polarized mm-hmm. see the other side as being like a completely different beast from them. Like people based on political differences, <laughs> people are seeing themselves not as being fundamentally very similar. Yeah. Because we're all not only members of the same species, not only members of the same country, like fellow citizens, but I mean people have way more in common than they like to think they yeah. do. 
Um, I agree. And people look at the other people on the other side of the aisle and think they like are completely different, are com- are just terrible yeah. people. Now this is a generalization, but you see mm-hmm. it all over the internet, mm-hmm. and it's yeah. worse on the internet because. It's relatively faceless, mm-hmm. and it's it's not personal at all. And yeah. because um, groups on the internet get m- get more polarized by talking to each other. I mm-hmm. mean, how does how's the alt right a thing now? Because of particular groups of people only you know taking particular sources of information yeah. and conversing with other like-minded people, and it just radicalizes the ideas. Exactly. I'm not calling alt right people like extremists or anything, but I'm just saying like the ideas get more radical than they were initially. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, now it's like there's this idea that you can't say anything and that's Mm -hmm. only because people get angry about everything now. Yeah. Because they feel like they have to publicly get angry about everything. Exactly. Ultimately, it's like, you know, you don't even necessarily have to apologize. Mm -hmm. I mean, because Kathy Griffin apologized, nobody cares about your apology. Mm -hmm. They just just care about the outrage. Ultimately, all this is going to do is fizzle (laughs) out, and people are just going to, like, be like, forget it. I mean, it's going to get rejected, like, by by 2020, it'll probably be, like, not as much of a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I just just feel like you can't can't include everyone. You can't be... um, Universal. Yeah, like, you know, there's always going to be one person in the room that's offended by something that you say, whether it was well-intentioned or not, you know? It just always happens. Well, on on one hand, it's also that point of know how to handle when you're offended. Like, if you're offended, don't, like, throw a big, like, don't make a big deal out about it. Like, the internet has given, like, 30 years ago, like, no one had a soapbox to talk on. Like, you'd have to, like, have a TV station or a commercial or something. Now the internet, everyone has a soapbox. It's democracy. Pure democracy. Which, it's not bad everyone has a soapbox. Like, we have a soapbox right now. Here it is. So so how do you feel like this whole PC culture affects art or, um, you know, films, comedy, anything? How do you guys feel about that? Interesting. What do you think? Well, um, it, it... if it does do a crime, well, here's the thing. If you're outraged about something, you make it a big media thing, and then the things you were angry about gets even more famous and more popular. So it kind of is, I don't know. So maybe I would say it hurts artists just because they might feel apprehension about making what they feel inside just because someone else says something. And it would be a lot better if people would just say, People would just be respectful and understand each other's opinions. I don't, I don't quite know. It's probably <laughs> bad. I don't know. I, it's yeah. <laughs> I think uh, no. I definitely see what you're saying. It's like people. Um, there is more emotion. There's a, there's a wider range of emotions than just anger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think you're saying like there's a, there should be a space for like respectful disagreement and stuff. I think that's yeah. kind of what you're saying. Yeah. And I think I think the effect that maybe this this like PC culture air quotes um has on like art or mm-hmm. at least in, in movies I guess I, th- I think to some degree people who want to make things with universal appeal mm-hmm. are going to be more inclusive and pay a lot more mind to it I mean I think nowadays the big the big budget movie is it's like the script is very locked down it has like every kind of race in it so that they have ultimate inclusiveness mm-hmm. but an interesting question about that right. I just don't feel like I, I advocate for being inclusive and being, mm-hmm. you know, more open-minded with different types of subjects and topics to yeah. explore in film and art and whatever. But I just feel like it's you can't include everybody. It's just you mm-hmm. can't. That's yeah, just no, my you opinion. Can't. You can't. Like, are you like talking about like films, like specifically? Just anything, just? art, even in comedy nowadays. You have to like like certain comedians have to watch what they say because someone in the room is going to get offended by a comic. Or, yeah, or, or, that's, think, true. that's true. I think that's why we have, and, like, uh, Bo Burnham mm-hmm. being, like, really funny is because he doesn't care. He mm-hmm. just yeah. wants to make music and wants to, like, make comedy. Like, one of his songs is called Kill Yourself, where he tells the audience to kill themselves. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I think as a whole, like, art is, it sort of, like, hurts from stuff like that, where it's like, uh, you're, like, we were talking about this before the podcast, like, Films that are about, like, LGBT, uh, 9-11, like, uh, stuff like that, like, stuff that, it always wins film festivals. It doesn't, it, like, it's not about the quality, it's about what, uh, what story you're trying to tell, and I think that really hurts the industry. I just feel like sometimes the PC culture is a little restricting on, I guess, the director or whatever. I don't know, I just feel like you feel the need to, I don't know, appeal to everyone, and... Right. I, that's just just not realistic. 
in yeah, my opinion. Yeah, I think you should just not try to appeal to <laughs> You just don't care at all. At, at this point, like, it's... it's no. Unless you're making, but a also huge don't movie. try to hurt people's feelings. Yeah. You know who cares? I, I, yeah. Or know. we can continue to hurt people's. Or, or if you do hurt everyone's feelings, <laughs> uh, hurt everyone's. One of, <laughs> yeah, so one of the uh, the film festival. That's what Runes of Toitano does. It <laughs> hurts your feelings. <laughs> that was the point. Uh, the film festival this year. Uh, I wrote uh, Ghost Beaters, a uh, mockument, <laughs> a mockumentary yeah. making oh, yeah. fun of uh, go- like ghost hunters and ghost adventures and yeah. stuff. And uh, I set out to offend everyone. So we have a character named Veronica Van Dyke, who's referenced as Dyke all the yeah. time. Of course we um, do. <laughs> you know, we got... <laughs> so just stuff like that. That's a cool class. The weird thing about that character is that I, like, I don't remember ever hearing her name. It's just the one guy called yeah. Dyke. It's <laughs> like, what's yeah, up I, with this dude? Like, what's up with... But, I feel um, like they could have been established more, this, but I think that I guess the, that was part of the whole. Uh, it was funny. The outrage. Yeah the, yeah. the second night, man, everyone was dying when they first heard Dyke. It was great. Yeah. I, I mean, I just saw people, you know, like, what? They yeah. found, <laughs> that's kind of joke where you gradually get it. That's yeah. the yeah. thing goes on. Yeah. That's the, cool. The audience that I was with when I saw the festival. <laughs> Was well, not having a good time. Really? They we're not laughing very much. Mm-hmm. What was that? It's kind of a dead crowd. Were you Were you laughing? I was laughing. I was mm-hmm. with my friends, so like we were all laughing at the jokes. You know, mm-hmm. you, when you're with your friends, like you tend to laugh more. Because yeah. be, I'll be honest, like when I'm yeah. by myself watching something, I don't usually laugh. Really? Out loud. I don't laugh out loud. Like no. I laugh on the inside. <laughs> Insert so, like, laughter. If I'm like watching a show that I like love, like a Psych is like one of my favorite show, mm-hmm. um, and I like I watched it every week from mm-hmm. o- o- yeah. 06 to when it ended, and like. Yeah, but I would your watch whole pineapple episodes. craze. Yeah, I still love pineapple. I, <laughs> I like the idea of pineapple so much. Um, but you know, so it's like I would watch the show mm-hmm. just like by myself sometimes, and like my sister would like never hear me laugh. She's like, "I thought you do you like this show? Like you're never laughing." I'm like, <laughs> laughing on the inside, because in fact, laughing is like a social. I mean, it's it's born in social interchange. Like the reason we laugh at jokes is is, per, I mean, to some degree, almost purely out of just like this social. Uh, kind of interchange schema that we have that's like mm-hmm. from all these years of evolution mm-hmm. whereas laughing from tickling is completely different which is interesting <laughs> <laughs> same, like, same yeah. response but like a different yeah. reason yeah. Yeah. yeah I still so, laugh when I'm alone but just not as much really? I, yeah. sometimes that's I do that's the thing I can't, depends on the humor. I, do. I can't watch Practical things jokers. I can't like be on Netflix and watch like I don't know do you do you laugh when you watch stand up and stuff like out loud yes if it's, I, I, don't I, I don't know I don't think I I don't know that I do I, that's the thing I depends can't I can't be in public and watch like a TV show because I'm going to laugh out loud. I don't know. I can't control yeah, it. That's I don't need thing. to be with anybody to not. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's yeah. great. I just can't. I can't be in public and people look at me. It's just funny. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's what reasonable. did she laugh? Do you cry though? In I public? Or <laughs> in public or <laughs> with the things you watch when you're alone? Uh, I don't know. It's, I, I think it takes a, a lot for me to cry over a movie. Yeah. Gotcha. I don't know. Yeah, That's just me. You, you do. It doesn't take me very much. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I have the most I cried. It was like two weeks ago. I watched a video where they <laughs> saved a baby elephant from a mud pile, oh. and they I saved the baby elephant. This. And then the baby elephant is running through the fields, and then the mom hears it and goes, Arr! and then ru- starts running this way, <laughs> and then they reconnect in the field. It got me balling. <laughs> <laughs> I was that was too much. <laughs> I mean, I've cried in public before, sure. Yeah. I don't yeah. think I really care. No. <laughs> I mean, like, when you're, once you're in it and you have that emotion, it's like, I'm just going to let it out. I'm a human being, so. True, true. I cried at a Starbucks once. Oh, I'm there a lot. Well, <laughs> <laughs> coffee, you will be next their year. Their coffee's not that great. I mean, I don't think anyone really... No, I don't really, love it. I don't God. think anyone really likes the taste of no. coffee. They just drink it because it makes it feel it's good. I don't like Starbucks as much. Like my dad, when he makes it at home, I actually, that's my favorite coffee. He makes yeah. I like it better coffee. than Starbucks. Yeah, I had some Trader yeah. Joe's coffee Yeah, from he grinds the beans and all that. Oh, they actually have to. <laughs> my dad, wait, I don't know what your question is. <laughs> okay. Go on, go on. Oh, wait, what, what were we talking about? The, His dad makes coffee. Right. Yeah, dad my dad makes, makes coffee, coffee, and it's better. I think it's better than Starbucks. Maybe that's because yeah. I no, started dude, out with No, dude, Starbucks that. is not good coffee. I don't think it's good. In my opinion, I don't know. It's efficient coffee. It's efficient. Yes, that's you're right. Really it's, a, yeah. it's the best coffee. It's like um, when you're out for breakfast, I remember Hayden. Do you guys know Hayden McLeod? He said something. Like you don't is. go to a Waffle House. You end up at a Waffle House. So I guess it's, in a way, it's Starbucks. I, I love Waffle House, I completely man. disagree with that guy. No. I love Waffle House. I go to Waffle House. Waffle House is so great. Because you have to be in Waffle House country, so it's not yeah. like I'm just like 
Like if there's a waffle house, I'm going because I don't get to that's go. That's how They're I. Not here. That's how I feel about it too. Yeah, now, Denny's. You end up at Denny's. Never yeah. been to Denny's. Yeah, I feel like Neither you probably you end know, up at Denny's. I mean, if it is it open 24 hours? Yeah, you know, that that's why suck. you end up at Denny's. But there's, so nothing, there's nothing house. else open. Why are there so many breakfast places open 24 yeah. hours? So IHOP is too. Because IHOP. I mean, no, because breakfast food is the best kind of food. I think it is. Yeah. Breakfast, lunch, and I could have um, breakfast food every day. All yeah, day, every day. Well, you're supposed to. That's lunch and dinner. Is. That's true. I have co- I I could drink coffee all day. See, I, I love the taste of coffee. I do. I'd same. Yeah. But I've been drinking this since fifth grade. Like, uh, <laughs> probably if there's anything for a stinting growth, I, I think might that's be... why you're really short. <laughs> no, I'm just yeah, kidding. I mean, how tall are you? I'm like five eight and three quarters. Oh, that's. So not I usually good. tell people five yeah. nine because I'm wearing shoes. And stuff. Yeah. 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 Hear that, everybody? Jackson Cosmacki is five nine. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Let's get that out to the world. <laughs> Everyone's gonna true. know this. No shame. But yeah. What about you? How tall are you? Oh, I don't know. Probably five seven, five six. I don't know. I'm pretty short. It's reasonable. It's actually better for act. It's actually better for acting though to be like, like in that range or something. Yeah, that kind of makes because sense because like, you can always fake height, but it's harder to fake. No, I mean because like maybe? you're like roughly on the because when you're acting with like you know girls are t- just shorter in general. Mm-hmm. Um, you're just on the closer height plane. So like we were, we did a film this past for at UVA um, in like April. Mm-hmm. We shot and the dude was like. Six four, mm-hmm. and the, the chick was like five five or something. Mm-hmm. Reasonable height, yeah. But like the height difference was insane. So like he was always had to be like crouching or something because he's not gonna fit in the frame with her <laughs> for the frame to look good. I mean, I told them like they should just do low angles. They didn't really want to do that. that that's but. what they have to do with uh, when they film with Robert Downey Jr. for Marvel. Is mm-hmm. He's he's a short man. He's like he's five short. four or mm-hmm. something. Sure. So every time you see him on uh, screen, he's always wearing heels. Same with Tom Cruise. No, uh, Same with yeah. Tom Cruise. Tom yeah. Cruise is like not okay with his height though. Apparently. No, he's he gets, he's real insecure about <laughs> he's it. He's insecure about it. Why? <laughs> just like because he's a, still a badass. Like he's I still know. Climb, yeah. climb he's a real movie Dubai. star, dude. I don't know. <laughs> what was that? Um, what's the tall building in Dubai? What's that called? Oh, Burj oh. Khalifa. It's the Burj Khalifa. Yeah. He climbed that like for, for <laughs> real. He doesn't need to prove to anybody. Like, what does it matter that you're five six, Tom? You just I climbed the Burj Khalifa. Yeah. It's it's like, like I've been to the moon, but I'm like four feet tall, so it's like. That's, you know, that's a nobody didn't care that, that you're four feet tall, but you went to the moon. You went so. to the moon. Yeah. Tell me about the moon. Like, I want to know. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Into a moon shorty. (laughs) Why are we talking about height right now? No, Tom Cruise has been around. How did we end up on this? Uh, Something about coffee. Yeah. Oh, Oh, Miss Mantelli gave me some good coffee. It was from Trader Joe's. Oh, oh yeah. Very good, very sweet. Trader Joe's. Did we get beans from Trader Joe's? Nice. I haven't been there in so long. I love Trader Joe's. Yeah, same. My inner hipster, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite at the level of Whole Foods, but yeah. not that I've ever been to. I've never been to Whole Foods. Actually. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, there's not one nearby. My parents don't want to spend extra. We just go to Safeway or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, True. Someday I'll, yeah. I'll reach full hipsterdom and I'll be, I'll be going there. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Which I would, hold on, I would like to address hipsters. Okay, <laughs> okay. Right, go ahead. Yo, feel free to talk about I don't, anything. I don't, I, people talk with a lot of scorn about hipsters. Um, and I see Jackson Harvey, like, rubbing his beard right now. Oh, that's <laughs> a beard. Oh, yeah, I, okay. I, <laughs> because, well, what I would Guilty. like to, what I would like to say is that, um, they're, they're a misunderstood, they're like a, <laughs> a like misunder- a misrepresented group or something. Because right. it's like, I think a lot of people look at them as like a bunch of people trying to be non-conformists mm-hmm. and then end up conforming to like a very particular archetype. Mm-hmm. But it's ultimately that we are like with such a there's so many people and there's only so many personalities. Like we have repeats, we have doppelgangers in in the like many doppelgangers. Yeah. There's many people very very much like me out mm-hmm. there. And at least in terms of personality, it's like a lot of people who have the same liking of like vintage things and old-fashioned stuff kind of clashing with certain Mm -hmm. new things in a particular setting they just have an affinity for that Mm -hmm. and so while that's not the the mainstream thing the mainstream is the word that tends to get used but it's like they are conform it is a subculture Mm -hmm. but it's not birthed out of people wanting to be non-conformist it's like they have a particular style set yeah um and in a lot of ways like my you know a lot a lot of ways like i don't see what's so bad about like why people hate them so much (laughs) i don't hate them certain (laughs) times i think there are like there can be obnoxious hipsters, but mm-hmm. there can be obnoxious everybody. Exactly. And it's like God. if you it's like if you see an obnoxious hipster, people are like, oh, that's a that's just hipsters in general. Oh yeah. That's just people in general. It can be yeah. that way. But like, I, you know, I just think they get a bad rap. I think they get a bad rap. <laughs> Speaking as someone who is. Are you a hipster? Are you a hipster? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're trying to kind of He's coming out as a hipster. I think I have certain like similarities to to hipster 
you know, styles. Do you and eat at like yeah. bougie restaurants and stuff? Well, first of all, I'm like a, a bougie person just in general. <laughs> and I'm like, at this point, I'm not going to deny it because I was I'm raised. Not, I'm not going to deny it either. I was <laughs> raised by bougie people. Like we go, like my aunt has a, my aunt has a place on Martha's Vineyard, like mm-hmm. pinnacle of bougie people. <laughs> yes. White, you know, white bougie people. I'm like, <laughs> I love that place. One of my favorite places. And at this point, I'm You're not, not guilty. It's your, I'm not. It's your heritage. You're not gonna apologize. I'm not for gonna who apologize. Yeah. At this point, I'm just gonna embrace it. Embrace <laughs> my love for Wes Anderson. <laughs> Unironically saying, like, yes, I am as bougie as he is, probably <laughs> in certain ways. That's great. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't think people should be ashamed of being exactly. like. Just let your freak flag fra- fly. Yeah. You guys let your freak flag fr- fry. <laughs> 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 what about you, Jackson Harvey? Um. I just kind of like what I like. I have never, if I really analyze it, like, is this hipster for me to like this? I wouldn't be able to like anything. Cause so, you know. <laughs> you guys ever eaten at Kava? Oh, they what? had one. What? They what? had one that opened think... up right by my school, and I was about to go, but I didn't. I didn't have the chance before I left. What is this? Going, this. going it's in It's Mediterranean there... food. It's kind of like Mediterranean Chipotle, isn't it's like, it? Uh, it's like Chipotle, yeah. but they have like yeah, falafel Mediterranean falafels. Heroes. I always get the falafels, yes. and it's like <laughs> I, love I don't falafel. know. I guess it's kind of bougie in a way. Do they but euros? I guess it's they have what euros? Yeah, they do, Ooh. and they have pita. Just all that stuff. Nice. Cool. I don't know. I guess that's what it feels like when you walk in there. I think that's what it feels like to be a Bernie supporter. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I love that place. So I'm guilty. Yeah. I go. To, I go to these places. I don't. Yeah, you know, I have no shame. There shouldn't be. I'm gonna shame. embrace it. There shouldn't be. We, we should. Everybody should have. I buy pride. coffee at like. You know, Old Town Tea and Spice, and it closed down. So oh, where yeah. am I going to get my coffee yeah. now? I know. I get yeah. flavor ones. My now. friend worked there for a long time. Oh yeah, yeah I have friends sad. that worked there too. Yeah. yeah, they said it was very fun, very chill. Why not so. close too? The toy um, store in Old Town. They closed <laughs> that. Remember? Yeah, Sarah <laughs> Bowman worked there. Mm. You know, there's like no bookstores there anymore. I went uh-huh. to Old Town. There's like none. Mm. There's just one. It's a Christian bookstore. Oh. All the books are oh. all the books are Christian. Did you? Which is like. No, <laughs> I mean not to say like not to say that they can't have that Christians can't have a bookstore devoted to what they want, but I want a bookstore with more variety, please. Yeah, uh, than just. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty bougie. I mean, there, there's a record store in Old Town that I go to regularly, all the time, Wh- and I have where, no which shame. One? Which one is that? Crooked Beat Records. Where is that? Where that was like that forty-seven dollar like Father John Misty album. Forty. What the new ones? Yeah. Who? Was it the deluxe copy? Probably. I'm not well, sure. Well, it's supposed to be thirty-five. I don't know, it was like 40 bucks. Or maybe it was like 37. I don't know, it was a lot of money. (laughs) I ended up wasting more than I needed to. to But did you buy the album? (laughs) No, I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it. Maybe next time. I I was supposed to get the Real Love Baby single, and I did not. And I'm really angry. (laughs) Because I I ordered it. I feel like that's... (laughs) I just really wanted that 7-inch so bad. Yeah. I want a $50 Barnes & Noble gift card. (laughs) Oh, In high school. I did... There was a Peep Style Rama contest Mm. for the... um, You know, with the Peep Marshmallows in the library. And I made one Lord of the Flies, but it was Lord of the Peeps. And I had, like, like the bloody head on the stick and, like, all that. I won. Spoilers. I was the only one who submitted anything. Yeah, come on. But I still won. Literally the only one who submitted something. Honestly, that's, like... You had, like, an advantage. I have (laughs) Yeah, I would say an advantage. I think you still would have won, even if other people had submitted. That's, like, pretty clever. (laughs) That's what they told me, at least. (laughs) I think in your mind, you're imagining all these, like, really bad, like, dioramas, like, oh, man, like, uh, just a shoebox filled with peeps not even glued together, and then there's yours, and you're just like, they're all going to love me, and then you just show up with your own diorama. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, anything else you guys want to talk about before we wrap up? Yeah, well, your shirt says the frights beach porn. Um, <laughs> oh god! <laughs> yeah, I, I was she debating. wore a jacket to hide it. I was debating. Yeah, I, it's so hot. I'm only wearing this hat, hot. by the way, because it's my hair's frizzy. And I took a shower, and they gave me a bunch of free shit from the school. So why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? At that point, but <laughs> anyway, so explain the shirt. Uh, so I got this shirt at a show that I went to. And it was like charcoal on it. <laughs> <laughs> but I went. I went to a show, and it was the frights. Um, they were all right, you know. I wasn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it wasn't that fun. To be honest with you, but they had like a new. This was before they released anything new. Oh, gotcha. And I think one of their songs with beat was beach porn, and gotcha. I just like the shirt. I'm like, why not? You know, <laughs> three quarter sleeve shirts are the best. I the like best. I'm wearing, they're, yeah, yeah, like they're supremely underrated. And, like they're not. There's not enough of them I, out there. I felt the need to wear um one of these three quarter sleeves today, and it's really big because I think I was there like, I don't know. I was there really late, and um. 
everyone else had bought everything like before, yeah, before the, show. the show so there was only like big t-shirts left and stuff like that and i was like yeah. you know what why not i'm gonna regret not buying it so. you know they always say you can shrink it in the wall in the yeah, dryer or whatever happen. but it doesn't ha- does not yeah, happen. It does not happen that's true I if see. someone can find a way to do that you know I need my dad that. claims to but he's wrong <laughs> i have this shirt it's like a double xl and he's like i'll just shrink it in the dryer it's like still still a double xl it didn't even get stop out lying XL. to me dad it's i appreciate ridiculous. really big t-shirts though i'm not gonna lie that's cool. I do that with sweatshirts. I always buy a sweatshirts. size higher. I always buy a size smaller. <laughs> <laughs> I like to s- stretch that, stretch that out. <laughs> Explain to us your shirt. Where's that from? So this is the uh, this is I love this is a uh, three quarter sleeves I love you honey bear mm. shirt. Father John Misty's 2015 album, and you can see all these different like little <clears throat> pictures on it that represent certain moments in the album or like moments in his life. Oh yeah. What's interesting though is like it's got references to kind of more. Fear Fun stuff, which is yeah, the first I, I see that. But the burning Hollywood sign reminds mm-hmm. me of Hollywood Forever. I don't Cemetery. Know. That's cool. Yeah, he's got the van. I don't know, but I think it's cool. I like the color. I like it. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. fun. And I think I'm wearing like pink pants with it, so like the pink <laughs> accents, the pink in the shirt. <laughs> pink. I like yeah. colors. Yeah, you're into Colors fashion. Good, Do you get the reference for my T-shirt? No. Artichoke is, Festival. Yeah. Okay. Cross Sophia <laughs> Artichoke Festival. This is the shirt that the kid wore in Stranger Things. Really? No yeah. Way. Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> I was. I got it as a gift. Steffi got it for me. I was oh, like, nice. "What is this?" And she said, "What is this reference to?" And I couldn't figure it out. And this. That's what it is. <laughs> it's a Stranger Things so kid you, wore it. You might like the website then, like Last Exit to Nowhere. Have you heard of this site? I have heard of it. I don't know what it is. So Last Exit to Nowhere is a, is a, is a site. That sells shirts and uh, hoodies and a bunch of stuff like that. But mainly the shirts are like the, the big thing. And the shirts are that kind of thing. They are all uh, have like references to mm. movies that everybody knows. Very mm-hmm. popular like, cult classic movies. But like not o- obviously about the movie. So like I have a Shaun of the Dead one. This is Winchester Tavern on mm-hmm. it. Which is the tavern. Um, I have a bunch of theirs. I have, oh, I was wearing yesterday this shirt that said Oregon State Psychiatric Hospital, mm-hmm. uh, which is for One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm hoping to get the new Caddyshack shirt, which has like a beaver on it. It says Bushwood, Nebraska. Mm-hmm. So like, That's if, great. Shirts I like, like that. that. They have Stranger Things one. They have other uh, Stranger Things one too, but they have like, this is a really cool site for film for film buffs and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, cause, yeah, you're, one like, of the, you're one of those? I think, yeah. I mean, <laughs> No shame. <laughs> how, how could you? How could you? Movie buffs. Pride. You guys want to talk about your t-shirts? I'm just wearing a Star Wars shirt. Of course, yeah. Four hundred one k run that I never ran. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Our listeners are very happy we talked about each other's shirts. Yeah, especially because they can't. Yeah, see. they can't see them. Well, they maybe can't we'll take see. pictures and put them in the comments. <laughs> yes. For this. yes. Any yeah. other like artistic or creative things that you guys are working on? I might remember I said. I, I've been doing a lot of painting and making little po- poems, and I might make a little book and then put it online, cool. like a PDF. Nice. Yeah, that would be cool. Is it, I've been is doing it just painting. like so. I just self-published. Uh, yeah, plugging really? myself. Um, oh, that's cool. Is, is it like a collection of poems? Yes. So I learned, and then little bits, little mini writings. And I stuff. learned you can't copyright a book of poems. You can copyright individual poems. Oh, I don't care about. How hard is it to copy? Oh, you mean people? You're worried about people stealing your stuff? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's like a full length, like novel thing. Um, It's not a hard process for copywriting. It's just you just click a few things like what genre is it, what does it fall under, etc. And then you just submit it to, and then you submit a copy to the copyright office, and then like six to nine months, they're like, hey, you have the copyright. Like this, the day you filed it is the day you own the copyright, but then they approve it, and then. I like it. Gotcha. Okay. And then you submit a copy just because that goes into the Library of Congress. Actually, thank that's you actually for telling me that because I that's, that's a good idea. Yeah, just go to it. just go to copyright.gov. They only charge you like five bucks to file a copyright. It's not hard. But let's not gloss over the important thing. You wrote a novel. Yeah. Oh I did. yeah. Let's hear it. Uh, I don't know. I did it on uh, Create Space. So they do yeah. uh, they do books. They do uh, music and they do DVDs. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I don't know. I just started as a project in creative writing uh, for National Novel Writing Month that cool. we did. And it wasn't required to publish, but we learned about it. And I just said, why don't I just go ahead and just yeah. do it for the yeah, why not? for the hell of it? Because I had a lot of fun writing it, and so uh, fun. I had it go through editing, uh, and since I self published, I had to find my own editors. I uh, had to find my own cover artist who's just Danielle over there who just did nice. everything. And well, I'm paying awesome. her at some point. It's um, just Danielle. <laughs> yeah, it's just. Um, and then after that, you know, they send you proofs, which I have a proof at home. 
um and then after that you just hit see i thought there's gonna be like a giant button that said publish you just hit approve and it's like you should you want to approve hit it again and it's like oh you publish now there it is wow then, so what was this uh what was this it's on amazon now I'm it's, guessing? On, it's on amazon it's, on it's amazon. called mars the bringer of war uh Ooh, it, there's sci-fi. a paperback version and a kindle version and if cool. you buy the paperback version you get a kindle version for free I'm gonna That's buy the cool. paperback version just because you make less support money. Support you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you make no, less not money. support. Oh, and the uh, opposite of that. Yeah, they. Uh, so so how much money do you make off this? How does so this, off of paperback, this? if you buy on Amazon, I make about two fifty off of it, uh, which it's priced at about nine dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they they print it and do all that stuff, um, and then if you buy the Kindle version. I make about uh, I think a dollar off of that because it's priced like to be three bucks, gotcha. but they have to do like all the converting and all that. They and do. then if you buy straight from the Create Space website, uh, I make about six dollars off of that, but they charge you shipping. So I definitely would uh, recommend uh, getting up uh, getting on Amazon because they are primable. So buy on Amazon the paperback for Mars: The Bringer of War. Yeah, mm-hmm. gotcha. That's very interesting. Yeah, Amazon. Uh, the Create Space is really cool. I love Create Space. It's very easy to, to actually put your movie on Amazon Video, but you don't make very much money at all. It's at the spot of. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you this, like when people watch your movie on Amazon Prime or something, like yeah. you make like five like five cents, mm-hmm. of, or like fifty. No, maybe fifty five cents of viewing, which is like so little, and it's it costs. Not a lot. I'm sorry, but it costs so much more to yeah, make a movie exactly. than to make. But you know what are you gonna do? But, so how do you feel about that whole distribution part of? filmmaking, I guess. Do we want to get into this? But I think there are more opportunities. There are. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's a good thing. I'm, I haven't really thought about making money mm-hmm. uh, yeah. per thing, so I'm not exactly sure. But I, I think it's really cool that I can put it on a website that everybody uses. Mm-hmm. You can just tell people, hey, the thing's on Amazon. You can go watch it. Yeah. And that's, that's awesome. You can advertise it. Vimeo, ad money. I don't know. I, I'm not expecting to make money. With it's, anything. it's great Until, self-publishing because yeah. like you don't have uh, ten thousand editors telling you how to at least for uh, writing you don't yeah. have ten thousand editors telling you hey you should take this story this direction like you can tell your story you don't have to worry about uh, ever like uh, changing it you don't have to you know they're not controlling and uh, at least for I don't know if it's the same for uh, movies or anything but at least for like novels. If I were to do traditional publishing, I'd make about twenty cents every time for everything that's uh, done. But they have a like they do editing, cover artists, all that stuff. And so I don't know if you guys had to, or if you had to do your own cover and everything. Yeah, I mean, I could have, I like, I could have hired people to do it. But I basically, I mean, we were on Amazon. You just upload mm-hmm. the images of, of your cover. You like, you upload three. You upload for different views depending on how people are looking at the yeah. film. Um, but like. So talking about dis- distribution of film, I mean, you don't make as much money at least on Amazon Video than mm-hmm. I think you do as writing the novel, and I don't know. I mean, so like the distribution of film right now, it's like there are a lot of ways in which you can get your film out there, but the market is so incredibly saturated that it's it's you know it's hard. Like you're not going to make any money. Like he was mm-hmm. saying, he's like, I don't expect to, and that's yeah. that's accurate because you're not going to. But at this moment, like in the film industry, it's it's all. I mean, so much power is concentrated in the in, in the hands of the studios, even though there are so many independent filmmakers, mm-hmm. when, you know, what's in the theaters doesn't really often correlate to how many people watch the movie. This is to say that, like, a lot of people watching movie, watch movies on, like, Netflix and Amazon. Streaming. Yeah. Streaming. Yeah. Streaming's huge. And what's good right now is that Netflix and Amazon are in this, like, competition. Mm-hmm. Competition's mm-hmm. great for everybody else. Except for Capitalism. Companies. Yeah, it's great for all of us. Yeah. It's not good Ooh. for them, too. And hopefully they just stay at war because <laughs> as long as they're at war against each other, like, independent filmmakers will have a lot of opportunities. And also, the good thing is that the, this, this, like, weird movie state where we exist where it's like the 50s all over again mm-hmm. it's just gonna crack in like a few years time and the hope is that you're in the independent film market like right when it does so you can pick up on that steam but right now it's like it's never been easier to make a movie mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean that there's a much greater percentage of good movies out there there's an incredibly large percentage like a, a 500 percent increase in how many bad movies are out there but the 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 amount of good movies out there has maybe changed to 10 percent I think I the think ratio has to okay, stay consistent. I agree with you. Yeah, if, the ratio of good movies. Yeah. If, if I don't know, if 30% of movies, well, probably less than that. If 10% <laughs> of movies are made, are good, 
then it just means there are more good movies, but this just in a sea, a greater sea of filth. Yes. Is what That's it is. exactly yeah. what it is. Because people, I mean, when I guess we you could shooting... say the same about like the human population. Oh man. Yes, if we were nomads, don't get me started on this, yeah. bro. <laughs> I will say that. So like, when people were shooting on film, everything had to be planned out beforehand, and that you know. That goes towards a lot of things, and maybe a few things you think of before that are simply like blocking and make sure everybody memorizes their lines. But that trickles down to all kinds of other things. It's like making sure the script is perfect before you shoot, making sure that like every shot is, you have like a composition ready that you think that you've thought through about like how is this the most effective way to, to get a certain emotion idea across. All of the film theory stuff that, that you learn about in classes yeah. become less important now because when you can just click record, fix it in post, yada, 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 it's like people don't put as much forethought, mm -hmm. and sometimes they do put some forethought into certain things, but then they neglect other things, like sound design. Yeah. And it's like, what makes a good movie is more sound design than visual design in certain ways. Uh, I mean, David Lynch is a perfect example of that. Like, would Eraserhead be as, as good or as influential a movie if it wasn't for the sound design that he and Al Splat did? No, it wouldn't, because it's like, the sound design is a huge part of what makes that movie effective. It's like the rumbling, it's the industrial, it's everything about that that makes the movie so effective. And if it was just the visuals and if you had some crappy sound design, David Lynch does his own sound design, even today with Twin Peaks. Mm -hmm. um, he understands that like, part of, and that's one of the things I'm talking about, is like he's an old school filmmaker where he understands that but before he goes into a movie, the things that make a good movie. And knowing what makes a good movie, knowing what how to tell a good story, those are still things that are scarce today. Mm -hmm. And just because there's more movies, just because there's more technical resources to be able to make a movie, uh, and just because it's easier to see movies, which mm -hmm. is the kind of things that all those you know, famous directors now did back in the day, just because all that is easier does not mean it's that much easier to know what, what it takes to make a good movie, consciously at least, uh, or, and how to tell a good story. You know? That's still something a lot of people are figuring out. I mean, Podcasts, a lot of the best podcasts now are just things that tell a really good story. And th those, those are the things that we as people are drawn to more than anything. And we're drawn to other people and so good any, stories. So anyone can make a movie, but not everyone can make a good movie. Is that what yeah. you're trying to say? Yeah, until they like really <laughs> spend some time thinking through this stuff. And you, know, you don't just hack away at it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they say, don't, don't, ju don't just work hard, work smart. Mm -hmm. you, know, you hear that about all kinds of things. Yeah. And that is very true for the film industry in any kind of artistic form. You, know, you, you, you could just do the exhaustive method of just keep throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's, that's, you're going to waste a lot of time and energy. And they say, I mean, they, you could say that the formula for success, for success or something is just time and uh, like time and hard work. Mm -hmm. you know, hard work plus time equals eventual success. And a little bit of luck is thrown in there to spice up the mix. But mm -hmm. but you know, there's something to be said for devoting your hard work in a much more directed fashion. You know, and I think nowadays it's like with the kind of distribution when it's so easy to make your movie and get it out there and let people see it, people spend less time thinking about the process and more time thinking about the results. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, it's like this whole human experience is more about the process than the results. Because I think everybody can kind of acknowledge that the results, at least when, you know, to some degree, are, are, are that we are forgotten. Are that we are ultimately like in this void of a universe and incredibly small and unimportant. And so the results are like neglect, you know, neglectable. But the process of, ex of living is, is, the only, is like the only thing that might have value to us. Mm. Um, yeah, so I don't know where I have <laughs> yeah. No, it's good, it's good. I think to some degree that applies I to like I, I how think to I have news. one more question. Yeah. So um, I know you're going to GMU next year and you're still at UVA, but like for films and stuff, do they own like your, I guess, because I know a lot of schools do this where you use their equipment and you're in the classroom, so they they pretty much own whatever you made. I don't know if that's the same the same case at UVA. Or that's actually a really good question. Yeah. I have no idea. I've, I felt like I think that they make um, at VCU. They kind of felt it kind of seemed like they did. This is a VCU cinema production kind mm -hmm. of thing, but. I think that if they were good schools, they would let you have it and use it however you want to, you know? Yeah. 
Because I, 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 you know, I visited some schools and some of them said, uh, some of them didn't even mention that. Some schools were like, oh yeah, like we don't own anything that you make. Like it's all you, you can distribute it yeah. you want. You can use the it The schools you that own your stuff wouldn't talk about that. <laughs> 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 do, you know, do you know if UVA does it? UVA does not own. Probably not. Because they, they don't have nearly enough infrastructure. Yeah. Anything made by the Filmmaker Society is mm-hmm. like, you can make it a, like, a Filmmaker Society production, but that's only really to help yeah. get some word out and yeah. to get give some more bona fides to the to the society in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they don't own our stuff, which is nice. Yeah, and they don't really have like a, a, a specific film program that you're, exactly. yeah, you're making your own thing. Like who would even be owning it at that yeah. point? Yeah. It'd be kind of right, messed up exactly. for them just yeah. to be like nepotistic about <laughs> it. Like, like the dean of admissions or something. It's just like, yeah, we own your movie. Like, oh, get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> you, you used our equipment. You used all our stuff. Well, well, this made well do, you, do you use... Um, like, does the school have equipment that you use? Yeah, so the Filmmaker Society itself mm-hmm. um, gets some money from, like, the student council and was able to, over the years, has bought our own equipment when we have, like, Black Magic camera, we have tracks, we have all, you know, all uh, we, don't, we have a glide cam, we have all kinds of stuff like that. And then the school in the digital media lab has its own equipment that you can rent, okay. but, uh, so, which is pretty nice, but the cameras are, like, are just, like, like Canon, mm-hmm. you know, not, like, not, not, not nice cameras. Like they're just like are they just like DSLRs or they're not DSLRs. Oh. They're just like simple camcorders mm-hmm. from. So it still gets the job done. It so. gets the job done. That's the idea for like people mm-hmm. who are coming to rent it out. It's because they're doing a project for their econ class. Yeah. It's not because they're making a film. Mm-hmm. Really. I mean, they could be, but yeah. but anyway. So like, yeah. they have those resources. Um, but for filmmaking society, we have our own stuff. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. VCU. Well. I think you can rent stuff from the cinema program, but at the library they have a ton of stuff that you can borrow. They have tripods and cameras and stuff like that. So nice. I never had to. I did get a tripod from them once, but besides that, no, nothing like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, thanks for coming in today. It was being so on the good. Show. Thanks for having yeah. us. Good luck well, with your podcast. So <laughs> I hope you get a good grade. It's good. I got a lot of good stuff here. I think we do. I think podcasting is awesome. It's a weird way of saying it. Internally, love, like screaming. I love podcasts. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Cool. Yes. Awesome. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Thanks, we'll, guys. We'll be back again tomorrow with. I think we're doing artists uh, in the next one. Yeah, which is yeah. funny because we talked. We talked a lot about artists today. So you so can some you can stuff. revisit those ideas. <laughs> in the yeah. next episode. We'll, we'll just reuse Different the people. audio. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Cool. So yeah, cool. Uh, I guess thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the next podcast. Bye.